Zodiac. 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 Oh. Hi. How are you doing? This is your friendly neighborhood random guy. And if you found the thing, whatever you were looking for then please like and subscribe. We have all heard about the worst villain of movies, who waved a gun and shot people and got away with it. But if you were born in 1960s, living in Northern California then you would know it's true. The Zodiac Killer was the name given to an unidentified serial killer who murdered at least 5 to 7 people and claimed to have killed 37. David Arthur Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16, were shot and killed on December 20, 1968, on Lake Herman Road, within the city limits of Benicia. The first murders widely attributed to the Zodiac Killer were the shootings of high school students Betty Lou Jensen and David Arthur Faraday on December 20, 1968 on Lake Herman Road, just inside the city limits of Benicia. Now we're seeing the exact location, where David Arthur Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen were attacked. Michael Renoma Joe, 19, and Darlene Elizabeth Farron, 22, were shot on July 4, 1969, in the parking lot of Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo. Majo survived the attack, Farron was pronounced dead on arrival at Kaiser Foundation Hospital. On July 5, 1969, at 12.40 a.m., a man phoned the Vallejo Police Department to report and claim responsibility for the attack. The caller also took credit for the murders of Jensen and Faraday six and a half months earlier. Police traced the call to a phone booth at a gas station at Springs Road in Tuolumne, located about three-tenths of a mile, 500 m, from Farron's home and a few blocks from the Vallejo Police Department Farron was pronounced dead at the hospital. Majo survived the attack despite being shot in the face, neck and chest. Majo described his attacker as a 26 to 30-year-old, 195 to 200 pound, 88 to 91 kilograms, or possibly even more, 5 foot 8 inch, 1.73 m, white male with short, light brown curly hair. Right now we're seeing the exact location where Michael Renoma Joe and Darlene Elizabeth Farron were attacked some 55 years ago. The killer this time sent a letter to San Francisco Chronicle newspaper on August 1, 1969 taking credit for the shootings at Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs. Each letter also included one-third of a 408-symbol cryptogram which the killer claimed contained his identity. The Chronicle published its third of the cryptogram on page 4 of the next day's edition. An article printed alongside the code quoted Vallejo Police Chief Jackie Stiltz as saying, we're not satisfied that the letter was written by the murderer, and requested the writer send a second letter with more facts to prove his identity. The threatened murders did not happen, and all three parts of the cryptogram were eventually published. On August 7, 1969, the San Francisco Examiner received a letter with the salutation, Dear Editor this is the Zodiac speaking. This was the first time the killer had used this name for identification. The letter was a response to Chief Stiltz's request for more details that would prove he had killed Faraday, Jensen, and Farron. In it, the Zodiac included details about the murders that had not yet been released to the public. He also said that when the police cracked his code, they will have me. Author Soren Roest Korsgaard explains that the episode paragraph in this letter referenced the Alfred Hitchcock Presence episode, Museum Peace. The attachment of a light to a gun was a plot element which Zodiac adopted. The episode dialogue also contains the phrase, the most dangerous game. Zodiac was both referring to and acting out Hitchcock's story elements. 
I like killing people because it is so much fun it is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because men is the most Don Gerue animal of all to kill something gives me the most thrilling experience it is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl the best part of it is they when I die I will be reborn in paradise and all the I have killed will become my slaves I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or atop my collection of slaves for my afterlife. Ebi Orietameth Paiti. Wow what a psycho. On September 27, 1969, Pacific Union College students Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were picnicking at Lake Berryessa on a small island connected by a sand spit to Twin Oak Ridge. A white man, about 5 feet 11 inches, 1.80 meters, weighing more than 170 pounds, 77 kilograms, approached them wearing a black executioner's tie hood with clip-on sunglasses over the eye holes and a bib-like device on his chest that had a white 3 by 3 inch, 7.6 centimeters times 7.6 centimeters, cross circle symbol on it. He approached them with a gun, which Hartnell believed to be a .45. The hooded men claimed to be an escaped convict from a jail with a two-word name, in either Colorado or Montana, a police officer later inferred that the men had been referring to a jail in Deer Lodge, Montana, where he had killed a guard and subsequently stolen a car. He said that he needed their car and money to travel to Mexico because the stolen vehicle was too hot. The killer had brought pre-cut lengths of plastic clothesline and told Shepard to tie up Hartnell before he tied her up. The killer checked and tightened Hartnell's bonds after discovering that Shepard had bound Hartnell's hands loosely. Hartnell initially believed this event to be a bizarre robbery, but the men drew a knife and stabbed them both repeatedly. Hartnell suffered six and Shepard ten wounds in the process. The killer hiked 500 yards 460 meters up to Knoxville Road, drew the cross-circle symbol on Hartnell's car door with a black felt-tip pen, and wrote beneath it. Vallejo December 20, 68, July 4, 69, September 27, 69, 6 30, by knife. At 7.40 p.m., the killer called the Napa County Sheriff's Office from a pay telephone to report this latest crime. The caller first stated to the operator that he wished to report a murder, no, a double murder, before saying that he had committed the crime. KVON radio reporter Pat Stanley found the phone, still off the hook, a few minutes later at the Napa car wash on Main Street in Napa. It was a few blocks from the Sheriff's Office, and 27 miles, 43 kilometers, from the crime scene. Detectives lifted a still wet palm print from the telephone but were never able to match it to any suspect. I couldn't find the exact location of Lake Berryessa attack, but I got close to the spot of crime as possibly I could. Two weeks later, on October 11, 1969, a white male passenger entered the cab driven by Paul Stein at the intersection of Mason and Geary Streets, one block west from Union Square in San Francisco, requesting to be driven to Washington and Maple Streets in Presidio Heights. For reasons unknown, Stein drove one block past Maple to Cherry Street. The passenger shot Stein once in the head with a 9mm handgun, took the driver's wallet and car keys, and tore away a section of his bloodstained shirt tail. Three teenagers across the street at 9.55 p.m. saw the incident and phoned the police while the crime was in progress. They observed a man wiping the cab down before walking away toward the Presidio, one block to the north. Two blocks from the crime scene, patrol officers Don Falk and Eric Zelms, responding to the call, observed a white man walking along the sidewalk east on Jackson Street and stepping onto a stairway leading up to the front yard of one of the homes on the north side of the street. The encounter lasted only 5 to 10 seconds. Falk estimated the white male pedestrian to be 35 to 45 years old, 5 feet 10 inches, 1.78 meters, tall with a crew cut, similar to but slightly older and taller than the description provided by the teenagers who observed the killer in and out of Stein's cab. The teenagers described the suspect to be 25 to 30 years old, with a crew cut and standing approximately 5 feet 8 inches, 1.73 meters, to 5 feet 9 inches, 1.75 meters tall. However, the police radio dispatcher had alerted officers to look out for a black suspect, so Falk and Zelms drove past the perpetrator without stopping, the mix-up in descriptions remains unexplained. A search ensued, but no suspects were found. This was the last officially confirmed murder by the Zodiac Killer.
The Stein murder was initially believed to be a routine robbery that had escalated into homicidal violence. However, on October 13, the San Francisco Chronicle received a new letter from Zodiac that claimed credit for the killing and contained a torn section of Stein's bloody shirt to prove this fact. The letter also included a threat about killing schoolchildren on a school bus. To do this, Zodiac wrote, just shoot out the front tire and then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. The three teen witnesses worked with a police artist to prepare a composite sketch of Stein's killer, a few days later, this police artist returned, working with the witnesses to prepare a second composite sketch. Detectives Bill Armstrong and Dave Tashi were assigned to the case. The San Francisco Police Department investigated an estimated 2,500 suspects over a period of years. Right now we're seeing the spot where Zodiac shot Paul Stein some 55 years ago. And also the spot where Donald Falk and Eric Zilms encountered Zodiac. This was the final confirmed kill of Zodiac. He kept on sending letters though but there are dozens of his suspected victims. This list included some crimes which have either been entirely solved or whose links to the Zodiac have been completely discredited by investigators. Various other authors speculated at the time of the killings that several other high-profile murders and attacks may have been the work of the Zodiac, but none have been confirmed. Local historian Christy Hawthorne suggests that the Zodiac may have murdered 29-year-old cab driver Raymond Davis in Oceanside, California. Davis had been shot with .22 caliber long rifle ammunition. On April 9, 1962, the day before the murder, an individual believed to be the culprit had phoned the Oceanside Police Department and told them, I am going to pull something here in Oceanside, and you'll never be able to figure it out. A few days after the murder, the police received another call from who is presumed to be the same individual, in which he told police details of the murder and said he would kill a bus driver next. Following Hawthorne's research Oceanside police announced that they were looking into possible connections between the murder and the Zodiac. Bill Baker of the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office postulated that the 1963 murders of a young couple in northern Santa Barbara County might have been the work of the Zodiac killer. On June 4, 1963, high school senior 18-year-old Robert George Domingos and his fiancée 17-year-old Linda Faye Edwards were shot dead on a beach near Lompoc, having skipped school that day for senior ditch day. Police believed that the assailant attempted to bind the victims, but when they freed themselves and attempted to flee, the killer shot them repeatedly in the back and chest with a .22 caliber weapon. The killer then placed their bodies in a small shack and then tried, unsuccessfully, to burn the structure to the ground. On February 5, 1964, Johnny Ray Swindle, 19, and Joyce Ann Swindle, 19, a newlywed couple from Alabama, were gunned down while walking along Ocean Beach in San Diego, California while on their honeymoon. Their killer, who was on a nearby cliff with a .22 caliber rifle, shot them from a distance. Johnny remained alive for hours, despite bullet wounds to his back, left thigh, left ear and temple. Joyce died almost instantly after she was shot in the back, left arm and head. The suspect then took Johnny's wallet when he succumbed to his wounds and left the crime scene. Police speculated that the two were victims of a thrill killer, and Rita Swindle, Johnny's sister, has theorized that the murders might have been the earliest slayings of the Zodiac. Cherry Jo Bates, 18, was stabbed to death and nearly decapitated on October 30, 1966, at Riverside City College in Riverside. Bates' possible connection to the Zodiac only appeared four years after her murder, when San Francisco Chronicle reporter Paul Avery received a tip regarding similarities between the Zodiac killings and the circumstances surrounding Bates' death. On June 8, 1967, Enadine Molina Martinez, 35, and Furman Rodriguez, 36, were attacked and murdered at around 10 p.m. on Vallecitos Road in Alameda County, California, while they were relaxing in their vehicle. A stranger approached them and told them to get out of the car. 
Furman was shot as he exited the car, and the killer abducted Enidine, leaving Rodriguez dead beside Molina's car. The killer then stopped by the entrance of Sunol Regional Wilderness Preserve, where Enidine tried to escape. The abductor then shot her twice in the back killing her instantly before driving off. Shortly afterward, a nearby resident called the Santa Rita Police Substation to report two gunshots. Officers found Enidine's lifeless body at 11 p.m. Authorities then discovered her car parked on Balacitos Road, where they found the body of Furman. He had been shot twice from the front, once in the chest and once in the shoulder. The weapon was a .22 caliber. Rape and robbery was ruled out as a motive. The murders occurred close to Pleasanton, California, where the Zodiac mailed a letter in March 1971 to the Los Angeles Times newspaper. On February 21, 1970, John Franklin Hood, 24, who had served decorated time in Vietnam in the 64th Armored Division and his fiancée Sandra Garcia, 20, who worked in the California Department of Motor Vehicles and was a Bishop High School graduate and Santa Barbara City College student, visited East Beach in Santa Barbara, California. The couple were discovered the following day lying face down on their blanket. Hood suffered 11 knife wounds, the majority inflicted to his face and back, with Garcia receiving the brunt of the vicious attack, leaving her almost unrecognizable. The bone-handled four-fish knife used in their murder was retrieved from beneath the blanket, partially buried in the sand. There appeared to be no sexual interference, and robbery was ruled out. The double murder bore many similarities to the previous murders of Domingos and Edwards, 30 miles miles west of the attack and seven years earlier, as well as the late Briesa attack on Hartnell and Shepard. Kathleen Johns, 22, was allegedly abducted on March 22, 1970 on Highway 132 near I-580, in an area west of Modesto. Johns escaped from the car of a man who drove her and her infant daughter around the area between Stockton and Patterson for approximately 11 d2 hours. On June 19, 1970, 25-year-old police sergeant Richard Philip Rich Radovich was gunned down by three shots from a .38 caliber revolver at point-blank range through the driver's side window of his vehicle, while in the process of serving a parking ticket on the 600 block of Waller Street in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco, California. Police investigated a possible link to the Zodiac, who alluded to his responsibility for the crime and taunting notes to authorities, however, no direct evidence has ever been established between Radovich's death and the Zodiac. Donna Ann Lass, 25, was last seen September 6, 1970, in Stateline, Nevada. A postcard bearing an advertisement for Forest Pines Condominiums, near Incline Village at Lake Tahoe, pasted on the back was received at the Chronicle on March 22, 1971. No evidence has been uncovered to connect Lass's disappearance with the Zodiac killer. Now that all the victims and suspected victims have been eliminated, we can move on to the suspects. There were 2,500 Zodiac suspects, and it's not feasible to cover them all. Arthur Lee Allen is the top choice. Allen informed his family of his departure on the day after Zodiac attacked the couple at Lake Tahoe in 1969. Allen told his family that he planned to scuba dive at that specific lake. In the evening, he returned home covered in blood and holding a bloody knife. Allen's friend, Don Cheney, said that Allen had called himself the Zodiac before the killer had made a public claim to be the Zodiac in 1971. During the second police interrogation of Allen, he admitted that the most dangerous game was his favorite book. This is the same book that the Zodiac killer mentioned in his initial letter. In addition, Allen was wearing a Zodiac watch with the same symbol used by the killer. Based on the evidence, police executed a search warrant at Allen's trailer home, where they found frozen animals, bloodied knives, but no solid evidence to support an indictment against Allen. Additionally, in 1974, Allen was arrested for child molestation and would serve three years in prison. During this time, no matches were made to the Zodiac. In 1987, former San Jose prison guard Ralph Spinelli told police that Allen had confessed to the murder of Paul Stein. In 1991 Detective George Boward interviews Michael Majo, who had survived Zodiac attack and also had seen his face. He's been shown a list of suspects. He's chosen Allen as his killer. Against Allen, the case is building up. The police were at his house again, finding the formulas to build a bomb, finishing bombs and Zodiac charts. Allen died in 1992 due to heart attack. But the partial DNA of Zodiac, recovered from a crime scene, was not matched with Allen's. And the final most suspect Lawrence K, later Lawrence Kane. Kathleen Johns, who claimed to have been abducted by the Zodiac killer, picked out Kane in a photo lineup. 
Patrol officer Don Falk, who possibly observed the Zodiac killer following the murder of Paul Stein, said that Kane closely resembled the man he and Eric Zilms encountered. Kane worked at the same Nevada hotel as possible Zodiac victim Donna Lass. Kane was diagnosed with impulse control disorder after suffering brain injuries in a 1962 accident. He was arrested for voyeurism and prowling. Faisal Zaraoui, a French-Moroccan business consultant, claimed in 2021 that he solved the Z13 cipher, and the solution to the puzzle reads, my name is Care, which he said is a likely typo for K. Others disputed that Zaraoui could have solved the cipher. Whatever the outcomes be. Kane's DNA was never tested with Zoidax. With that being said. Investigators hope to find Zodiac Killer's identity through DNA, like how they found the Golden State Killer. Only time will tell. But for the people of Northern California in 1960s to 1970s, Zodiac Killer will go down as the biggest bougieman, till then the case remains unsolved. Again if you found what you were looking for? Then please like and subscribe. Until next time, your friendly neighborhood random guy.